Hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan page that will have a plot synopsis and character bios for the issue we're covering today. So, we, I've been kind of going through some of the early, picking and choosing some of the early uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, some I have already covered. I decided to go back a little bit before I keep going forward. I've also uh, been covering the Todd McFarlane Amazing Spider-Man run. Feel free to check that out if you also would like. I have a playlist there. I've also have an Amazing Spider-Man, or sorry, a Spider-Man playlist available if you so would like to look at other videos related to the good old webhead. So we are going to be looking at Amazing Spider-Man number 14 from 1964. This is the first appearance of the Green Goblin. And it is a quite expensive issue. So also features the Hulk. Um, this issue is written by Stan Lee, probably plotted by Steve Ditko, but we all know Stan Lee did not like to share credit. And Steve Ditko, I believe, is also the inker. I don't believe Steve Ditko had an inker. So, here we go. The grotesque adventure of the Green Goblin. I do not believe that we reveal who the Green Goblin is in this issue. I have to tell you the truth, I haven't read this issue since uh, I was a child. I don't have the original. I had, I think, a Marvel Tales. Um, but I read it when I was very, very, very young. Uh, in the... Um, probably... Oh, goodness gracious, I'm trying to think. Probably 82, 83. And I probably haven't read it since um i have a i don't even know if i have that marvel tales anymore i have the epic collection but to be honest um it's hit and miss on um whether i read them or not so um so we're gonna kind of go through this together so i sort of am looking at this for the first time since um i read them as a kid so um, here we go. Um, only the Mary Marvel Mad Men could have dreamed him up. Here, here's how it happened. The gang at the bullpen said, let's give our fans the greatest 12 cents worth we can. <laughs> Amazing. This was 12 cents back then. And this issue is in the thousands now. So they did give you 12, the greatest 12 cents worth. Let's get a really different villain, a bunch of colorful henchmen for him, and let's even add a great guest star. So we did. And here's the result. Another mighty Marvel masterpiece. Tell you what, Marvel really differentiated themselves from DC Comics with that uh with this stuff. So written by Stan Lee, the poor man Shakespeare, illustrated by Steve Ditko, the poor man's Da Vinci. And lettered by Art Simic, the poor man's rich man. So, I don't know what the... You know, a lot of comic books, even up to the 80s, had these things. I really don't know what uh, these uh, numbers are. Um, And when I draw Spider-Man, you know, it's so funny. I obsess over trying to get the web in his uniform perfect and then you look at some of these things and you're like well they didn't you know they were just trying to get these things going and it's amazing um how beautiful it looks yet when you look at them closely that web is just you know and i obsess over it that's why i don't like drawing spider-man but all right the Green Goblin is such a nifty villain that the sooner we meet him, the better. So let's visit a silent, shadowy basement laboratory where we find there 
My flying broomstick is finished at last. Now to put on my costume and test it out. And so, it's purring like a kitten. I made the control simple enough that there's no chance of fatal error. And now to keep my appointment with the most unusual group that's awaiting me. Would people get mad at me if I said Steve Ditko is better than Jack Kirby? I feel like some people would, but I I prefer Ditko. There, I said it. And in a sleazy hotel room not far away. Um, so I believe these are called the Enforcers. So um, there were... Uh, there were... They're not very important or, you know, um, but they were early spider villains. So the Green Goblin shows up. It's no tricks, Ox. I'm now ready to give you the, the four of you orders. Look, it's him. You're nuts, Goblin. The Enforcers don't take orders from anyone. Correction, Ox. I'm not anyone. I'm the Green Goblin. Hey, sparks shooting out of his fingers. Start talking, Goblin. I've got a hunch it'll be worth listening to. <laughs> I know that Spider-Man defeated you and caused you to go to jail for a stretch some months ago. And so, of course, it tells you that that was an amazing Spider-Man 10, which I did not cover. So, um, do as I say, and I promise you'll have your revenge on him. Mister, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> Uh, so simplistic. Um, beautiful work. So, sometime later in the plush offices of a glamorous Hollywood movie studio. Years ago, we won an Oscar with our movie, The Nameless Thing from the Black Lagoon in the Murky Swamp. But we haven't had a good scary hit since. You're right, BJ. Of course, BJ. So true, BJ. So he's got a bunch of yes men. I've got to think. I've got to get an inspiration for a picture as great as the nameless thing from the Black Lagoon in the Murky Swamp. So leave me. I must be alone. And of course, all the yes men agree. So I have it. I'll change the title and release the same movie again. I'll call it the unknown thing instead of the nameless thing. I'll make millions. And so the Green Goblin shows up. Forget it. I've got a real money-making idea for you. And so he's like, whoa, whoa, who are you? Call me the Green Goblin. I'm your next star. You're nuts. Now get on your broomstick and fly out of here. Very well. If you don't want a movie co-starring me, the Enforcers, and Spider-Man. Did you say Spider-Man starring in a movie for me? I can't miss it. I can see it now. I'll have hundreds of dancing girls, a cast of thousands. Maybe I'll get Tony Curtis to play Spider-Man. Uh, sp sorry, Spider-Man or one of the Beatles. I'll go <laughs> I'll go you one better. I'll get you the real Spider-Man to play the part. I was right. You are nuts. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody can get within 100 feet of him. But you'll deliver Spider-Man exactly. Now you leave everything to me. Just relax and count your money. <laughs> Oh, I just, I love it. So, all right. A few days later, 3,000 miles away in New York. Peter, how do you do? Oh, sorry. How do you do it? You're the only one in the class who got 100% on our last exam. I guess it's just luck. Liz, oh, sorry. I read it wrong. That's okay. And spending long hours studying every night. And Flash goes, a lot of good it'll do you. Who wants to be an egghead anyway? Not me. And so Liz goes, so what happens, Mr. Flash Thompson, that you couldn't be? You don't have the equipment for being an egghead. Namely, you're too dumb. It's the men with the brains who run this country, not muscle-bound goops like you. And they're like, Liz is right. Sure she is. And uh, Peter's like, well, what do you know? Looks like the kids finally see the light. And so she walks away. Look, Puny Parker, I warned you not to try to, to uh, beat my time with Liz. Um, she ends up marrying... Uh, who is it? Well, they got divorced. Um, the Green Goblin's kid, Harry Osborn, if I remember correctly. So, um, And, of course, Flash Thompson is the new Venom. Or Vanti... I don't know. I... <laughs> Comic books nowadays have gotten a little too complicated, but all right, B. 
Beat what time? You've got about as much chance with her as Khrushchev has with J. Edgar Hoover. And so he's listening to a pocket radio that's not quite a pocket radio. Hey, quiet, you guys. There's a bulletin coming over my radio. It's reliably reported that a green-garbed figure in a broomstick has been flying over Manhattan over the past hour. The public is asked to keep calm until we can verify. And so Peter runs. It sounds like someone's imagining things, but just to play it safe, Spider-Man better do a little checking. Lucky my classes are finished for the day. No one will miss me. And so minutes later, so in a few minutes, he gets from Queens all the way to Manhattan. All right. The radio report was right. He looks like some sort of green goblin. I'll make a catapult of my web and see what he's up to. I better not miss. It's a long ways down. Hold it, fella. You're about... How about giving a guy a lift? And Green Goblin says, Spider-Man, I've been waiting for you. I knew if I flew around the city, you'd be sure to investigate sooner or later. Okay, then you found me now. What's the pitch? I have a legitimate deal to offer you. I represent BJ Cosmos of Cosmos Productions. He wants you to star in a movie. He's in New York especially to see you. Don't take my word for it. He's at the Ritz Plaza Hotel. And so, <laughs> I'm on my way, but if this is a gag, you'll be sorry, little goblin. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And so, <laughs> I've searched half the hotels already and still, oh, there you are. Come in, come in. Just don't hang there. If anyone's going to see you, I'll pay them. I'll make them pay for it at the movies. I don't believe in wasting words. I'll give you $50,000 to star in the Spider-Man story. We'll write an original script, and you'll fight the enforcers in the Green Goblin. If I accept, I don't want any interviews, no publicity, no seer sights on the set, with no phony romance builds up with the, with the starlets. Okay, okay, but you'll break a million Hollywood hearts. So just sign in the dotted line and I'll make you more famous than the nameless thing from the Black Lagoon in a murky swamp. And Peter's like, fame fooey. I'm just thinking of all the wonderful things I can do for poor Aunt May with $50,000. I just can't turn this down. So when you hear $50,000, even for today's standard, um, that is a lot of money. But... Just so that you know, $1 in 1964 was worth $10.01 today in 2024. That is how much inflation has gone up. $1 in 1964 was $10.01 today. So $50,000... In 1964 equals 500 500 thousand so $500,500 there you go that my friends is inflation <laughs> so uh, it's still when you think about how much freaking money movie stars get today getting getting spider-man for $500,000 is still pretty cool so all right then, after the contract is signed, remember, report to my studio in Hollywood by the end of the week. Don't worry, I'll be there. And so, the Green Goblin's like, it worked. Neither of them suspect my real motives, and Spider-Man doesn't dream that this trip to Hollywood will be a one-way journey with no return. These elaborate schemes to keep the... Re it, you know, this is to keep the readers entertained. A real bad guy would have just shot him or done something at that time, but... It's comic books, and the 60s was a silly time. So, all right, the next morning at the offices of the Daily Bugle. Betty, do you have a few minutes? I've got something important to tell you. Sure, Peter, but don't let Mr. Jameson see us. He's in one of his un his usual horrible moods. Parker, I thought I heard you, says JJ. Pack your bags, kids. Cosmos Films is making a movie of Spider-Man in on the coast, and they claim the real Spider-Man is starring in it. And you want me to go out there and get some exclusive photos for you, huh? I hope he'd send me. This is the perfect excuse to give at May. But I want to tell Betty first. He's in high school. How that? <laughs> so they're gonna. So he's gonna. 
miss school and go, <sighs> it's, just, it's just this is just great i you know i know that's silly but it's fun i don't know so all right it sure will be great though i'll get a bundle from mr cosmos and make additional money from old jjj for the picks i take at may will never have to worry again and Betty's like, you look mighty happy, Peter Parker. I suppose you can't wait to meet all those Hollywood beauties. Ah, uh, that's not why I was smiling, Betty. You know how I feel about you, Betty. She's an adult. He's in high school. That's all right. That's perfectly all right, Mr. Parker. I don't I don't claim to be as glamorous as those starlets or that blonde Liz Allen you've been walking home from school lately. Liz, so that's what's bugging her. So... Oh, real quick, JJ just looking. <laughs> All right. So Peter's going to tell Aunt May, Peter, dear, I think you're still too young to go uh, tra tripsing around the country that way. Gosh, Aunt May, I'm a high school senior already. I'll soon be in college. But I worry about you. You know how fragile you are. Look, I suppose I promise to dress warm, eat three good meals a day, and take my allergy pills every morning. Please, Emmy, this means so much. And she's like, well, I suppose I can't keep you tied to my apron strings forever. All right, dear, you may go. And here she's she's got a tear. All right. And so the little cast of characters in our true-to-life drama are soon assembled. Remember, all of you, I want to win another Oscar with this film. Don't let me down. I want action, action, action. BJ's makeup man must be a real genius. Those actors look like the real enforcers. I wish we could tackle him now, says Ox. No, wait till we get on location. And so, after a difficult journey, the camera crew and the stars reach a deserted area in a New Mexico where the movie is to be filmed. Let's get started. Unload the equipment and have the cameras ready to roll in 30 minutes. We'll shoot the big fight scene first. What a location. Feels as though we're at the edge of the world. Says Spider-Man. <laughs> Look, they're all reading the script together. This is so freaking awesome. Say, Spider-Man, suppose we go off and rehearse the fight scene while they're setting up cameras. Yeah, we want to make sure nobody gets hurt when we perform for the cameras. Okay with me, says <laughs> Spider-Man. Now, in the first scene, I'm the leader of the enforcers, and I fly in and tell them to destroy you. That isn't, that isn't how it was written on my script. Yeah, well, who says you got the right script? And Ox hits him. Hey, try that again. I'll forget this is just a movie. He must be nuts to swing so hard. And wait, why is my spider sense tingling this way? Holy smoke, I must be the world's price chump. It's a trap. They're not actors. They're the real enforcers. Too bad, boys. I'm wise to you. Too bad for you, fool. It's too late. You're surrounded. And so we go, we go. I'm not going to read all that. Basically, we just have a fight here. And so uh, the Green Goblin, I'm willing to bet you're the brains behind this little caper. Spider-Man, you don't know the half of it. And so he's taking out uh, one of the bombs and throws them at you or the grenades you know one of the things i love is how todd mcfarlane was able to change this webbing so um they rope him with the lasso but he breaks loose and the enforcers are tackling him and he finally pushes them off And so um, he makes, uh, using the desert, the sand, he starts to create a dust flying it in. Uh, he's trying to um, make it hard for him to be seen and disorient them. So the Green Goblin's uh, patrolling through the air. He'll have to emerge from there sooner or later. I'll see him when he does. And so... Uh, Aunt May is writing Peter a letter. Jesus, that is funny. So, 
Uh, and I hope you're taking your vitamin pills, Peter dear. Also, be sure to get enough sleep. You know how easily you tire. That's just awesome. So, <laughs> and so, I love this part here. The, while the neighborhood teenagers gather at the soda parlor, <laughs> the soda parlor, um, one of them in particular seems to miss the studious use. Have any of you gotten any mail from Peter Parker yet? I thought Liz was your gal, Flash. How come she's interested in Parker? And Flash is like, you're just trying to make me jealous. He's a big zero compared to me. And I love this part. Tell me, Flash, how much rent do you pay in that dream world you live in? Peter is a dreamboat. He's sensitive, intelligent, articulate. You probably don't know what those words even mean. Nuts. He's scared of his own shadow, and you know it. And so... And then here... Parker better bring me some back... Some, sorry, back some sensational pictures of Spider-Man. I don't want to find out that he's wasting his time dating those Hollywood glam, <laughs> glamour girls. And Betty's like, oh no, I mustn't even let myself think such thoughts about him. I mustn't. So, uh, Goblin's still looking over there, and Spider-Man's uh, going into that cave. Oh, no, so he does see it. So he's like, he's entering the cave. I'll signal the enforcers. So, sorry, I was going by what I was seeing. So, he's hiding. I love it. A boulder that's just, that was such a trope. The boulder is um, always a round rock that's easily pushed. So, they're going to go get him, but looks like Spider-Man is going to get one at a time. So, um... He grabbed one, and now he grabs the second one. Um, Goblin, by the way, there should be no light. It's dark, but that's all right. Um, so Goblin hits, uh, throws a bomb, misses him, or a grenade. Um, Spider-Man uh, traps him, but of course he uses the back of the rocket. That thing must run on some good efficient fuel because that thing hasn't run out of fuel yet and so spider-man gets rid of ox and so um they i even forgot the hulk was coming holy cow all right so goblin is still trying to get rid of spidey by throwing some uh grenades at him and so and when it clears, Spider-Man's astonished eyes behold the strongest living being to walk the earth, appearing like a nightmarish colossus, his baleful eyes uh, glowing his, with hatred and fury. The Incredible Hulk lunges forward. So, uh, Hulk, of course. Even here, deep in the, my hidden caves, you attack me, but no one can capture the Hulk. And Spider-Man's like, capture you? Brother, I, didn't even, I don't even want to share the same planet with you. So, and Goblin's like, what a fantastic stroke of fortune. We've somehow stumbled upon one of the Hulk's hiding places. Now all I have to do is let him finish Spider-Man. Nothing that lives can match the Hulk's strength. So, um, I think this is the first time the Hulk and Spider-Man meet. So, all right. Hulk's making a mess. And... Spider-Man uh, webs him, but of course, he's the Hulk, gets out, and so Spider-Man's like, okay, Hulk, I tried to reason with you, try to explain I'm not your enemy, but if it's a fight you want, I'll show you that Spider-Man isn't exactly a weakling either, and punches him, so, and then Hulk's like, <laughs> whatever, and Spider-Man's like, ow, so, um, you can see here, Spider-Man throwing a boulder at him. You know, I'm always amazed that the Hulk was able to continue and never got canceled. I just can't imagine the Hulk selling that well. And... Now we think of the Hulk, you know, we we have had Peter David's run. Now, we've had some great writers do some great stuff with the Hulk. But the fact that the Hulk survived 
into the 80s without cancellation, and yet the X-Men could not is so weird to me. Because when you look at the early Hulks and the set, and I mean, it, not so much the early Hulks, but when you start looking past it, when you when you start to get into the 70s, the Hulk was just the, the whole thing. Um, there was no evolution, in my opinion, on the Hulk. Even the the in the eighties in the early eighties with those Magnolia runs, they, I mean they sent them to outer you know they did all sorts of goofy things. So I always find it strange that the Hulk managed to continue on and never got canceled. So all right, so Spider Man's not doing very well as the Hulk continues to uh, pound him. So. No, um, sorry, let me go back. So he's trapped. Sorry, there's that boulder that they rolled in. And so Spider-Man runs out of the way. The Hulk smashes it. Um, he's like, now that I'm free to swing outside, nothing can stop me. I'm still the fastest, most agile one of all, as long as I've got room to move. And so he finds the Green Goblin. Uh, grabs the, before he had the glider, grabs this uh, broom thing. Um, and he falls. Luckily, he falls into that lake. And he um, holds his breath, lets the Hulk kind of get out of the way. So... He decides to follow the Hulk. He says, I'm probably a nitwit for risking my neck uh, again like this, but even though they're not exactly my best friends, I can't stand by and let the Hulk grab them. He's taking the long way around. With my speed, I should be able to take the other fork and have them out of here before he can reach the spot they were. So he's getting the enforcers. And so, just in time, it looks like an army helicopter is hovering above They'll be coming down to investigate in a few seconds. But there's no need for me to hang around. Once they recognize the enforcers, the rest will be routine. And so a short time later. Sorry, BJ, the movie's a fizzle. The Green Goblin flew away, Spider-Man vanished, and the army turned turned the enforcers over to the police. They can't do this. BJ Cosmos, call my lawyers. We'll sue. Who will we sue? Um, What's the difference? We'll find someone. And... We shouldn't even search a Green Goblin or Spider-Man because the Hulk was sat in the area. Nobody would dare remain there. The Hulk? Did you say the Hulk? Hold everything. What an inspiration. He's even better than Spider-Man. He's a genuine monster. The public will love that. Quick, draw a contract for him. So, um, Spider-Man shows up, says, Mr. Cosmo, I want to talk to you. From now on, you better be more careful about the people you hire, especially your villains. Spider-Man, sorry, my boy. I can't use you anymore. We've stopped shooting on your picture. We're going to start a new spectacular. But if you leave your phone number, perhaps we'll see and we'll need some extras. Now, wait a minute. What about our contract? Didn't you read the fine print? You don't get any money until the picture is completed. So if we don't complete it, I don't owe you anything. But I'll pay you your expenses. You're not a really J. Jonah Jameson, are you? And so... Here's your expense money, Spider-Man. Don't call us. We'll call you. At least it's enough to pay my fare to New York. Oh, well, that's showbiz. And so by taking a bus, I'll save enough to be able to uh, give some uh, money to Aunt May. So he's heading back to New York. So, um, so the Green Goblin comes and we take off his, he takes off his mask, but we don't see it. We don't know who he is at this moment. So, uh, very cool um, hiding him. And so, nowadays, of course, we know who the Green Goblin is, but we don't at this time. And so, uh, Peter's uh, in New York. He's like, the Green Goblin is somewhere in the city. My spider instinct can sense it, but where? He could be any place. He could be anyone. I must never relax my guard. So... Alrighty. Amazing Spider-Man number 14 from 1964. 
Um, hope you enjoyed it. That's silly, I know, but we do know that comic books do evolve. But that is that this is where we were in the '60s. So, um, like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.